WBOY, the news team of champions. Coming up on 12 News Weekend Edition, Fairmont State continuing their Trunk of Tune series. We'll show you this week's feature. Plus, 18 people stuck on Lake Erie today. We'll tell you how it happened. We had an absolutely gorgeous day across the region today, but how long will that last? Those details coming up as 12 News Weekend Edition starts now. Working for you. This is WBOY, now in high definition. 12 News Weekend Edition starts now. Good evening and welcome to 12 News Weekend Edition. I'm Gina Cadigan. Thanks for joining us. Let's take a look at our first forecast. Josh Redwine is standing by with more. Josh. Thanks, Gina. We have some more sunshine in store for us as we head into the day tomorrow with much milder temperatures into the middle of the week. And then another chance of snow comes back for the end of the week. But let's take a look overnight tonight. As we drop down into the teens and 20s, very frigid conditions out there, so make sure you are grabbing that coat as you head out the door. It is going to be very dry as well, so chapstick, lotion, all of that as well, just because we don't want your skin to dry out. 47 for a high tomorrow, mostly sunny skies with that, and then a chance of snow does come for the overnight hours and into Tuesday. But then by Wednesday, we are back mostly sunny skies and in the 50s, but I'll have your full forecast coming up in just a little bit. And Gina? Fairmont State University's Frank and Jane Gabor West Virginia Folklife Center continued a series called Trunk of Traditional Tunes. Today, the center hosted a performance by fiddler and fiddle maker David Bing. The series is supported by the West Virginia Humani Humanities Council through the American Rescue Plan. Each presentation throughout the series will be recorded to be used as part of an online curriculum that will be available to schools and community organizations. West Virginia's traditional music, in fact, most traditional music, lives in the oral tradition. So in other words, my mother teaches it to me and I teach it to my child, or I go to the neighbors and they sit out on the porch and they play the fiddle. Their next event will be on February 20th. A three-year-old in Philadelphia was shot after getting caught in the middle of a dispute between two tow truck drivers. The shooting happened early this morning in Philadelphia's Port Richmond neighborhood. Officials say two truck drivers got into an argument. They got out of their trucks and started fighting. One of the men eventually went back to his truck to retrieve a handgun. He started firing the weapon in the direction of a tow truck where the three-year-old was sitting. The child was struck in the leg and is currently recovering in a nearby hospital where he's listed in stable condition. Authorities say they are searching for the shooting suspect who fled in his truck shortly after the incident. They believe he was driving a black truck with tinted windows that had a tow underneath it. It's unclear what the two truck drivers were arguing about. Icy winter fun turns dicey when nearly 20 snowmobilers are stranded on ice in Lake Erie. 18 people were on the lake in Ohio when the ice started to crack, breaking away from the ice, connecting the group to the shoreline. All 18 people were rescued thanks to the Coast Guard and a good Samaritan who jumped in to help with an airboat. No one was hurt. A massive rescue effort to save a young boy trapped it deep in a well for more than four days in Morocco is over. The boy died before rescuers could reach him. They recovered his body Saturday night. The boy fell into the 100-foot deep well near his home on Tuesday. Crews lowered a rope to send oxygen and water down to the boy as well as a camera to monitor him. They dug a tunnel into the hillside to reach him, but they ran into a large rock that slowed them down. Morocco's king has expressed his condolences to the boy's parents. Now an update on a story we brought you in our 6 o'clock show. Human error appears to be the blame for a problem with the public water in Austin, Texas. A problem which means people uh, for people will need to boil their drinking water for a few more days. The city handing out bottled water at five distribution sites today. Workers also filled jugs with drinking water. The boil water advisory first went out Saturday night, a move prompted by the problems with the public water supply clarity.
It's becoming clear that this was uh, uh, errors from our operating staff at our Ulrich plant, uh, oversights in how they attended the process of treating water at Ulrich, and, uh, and that's certainly unacceptable to us. We have professional staff, all of our staff that operate our plants are licensed operators, uh, trained, uh, they know how to manage plants, they know the importance of managing turbidity or clarity, and to take immediately actions when they see those, those, uh, those processes starting to have problems, and unfortunately that did not happen here. This is the city's first water boil notice since the winter storm in February of 2021, which lasted nearly a week. Officials hope to have the water issues resolved by Tuesday. Coming up on 12 News Weekend Edition, Queen Elizabeth celebrating her historic 70th year on the throne will tell you exactly all the exciting events Britain has planned. And later, athletes making the podium in Beijing will have your Olympic update. Stick with us. Serving our community is your financial home. Freedom Bank pledges to enhance the lives of our customers and the communities we serve. Best of luck to all of our U.S. athletes. Freedom Bank, we pledge allegiance to you. Have you been hurt by a truck? You need an experienced lawyer to handle these difficult cases. At Hayhurst Law, we've recovered millions of dollars on behalf of truck accident victims. Hayhurst Law, protecting you. TGI Fridays in Bridgeport invites you to great food, great service, and even better deals. Choose from our signature entrees like our whiskey glazed ribs, chicken and salmon, or our signature whiskey bacon burger. Call and make a reservation today or order online and utilize our curbside pickup. It's all at TGI Fridays at White Oaks in Bridgeport. Great food, great service. Come join us at Friday. Come eat with us. What makes best reviews the best reviews? Ooh, pretty colors. They have an unbiased team that researches products in real world situations. Oh no, Count Bristol. We settle this dispute through dance. To give honest, reliable recommendations on just about any product you can imagine. So you can be confident that whatever you're buying is right for you. Faster, Count Bristol, faster! Whatever you're into. For the best reviews, go to bestreviews.com. Seriously, before you buy anything, ever. If you're an Olympic junkie, you can't miss the Olympic Zone. WBOY will be telling personal stories about Olympic athletes, their training, and their life outside of their sport. And insider info for each night's competition. The Olympic Zone is powered by the Miley Legal Group in Clarksburg and Morgantown. Serving our community is your financial home. Freedom Bank pledges to enhance the lives of our customers and the communities we serve. Best of luck to all of our U.S. athletes. Freedom Bank, we pledge allegiance to you. For you, this is 12 News Weekend Edition. The Holiday Inn in Morgantown hosted their exotic animal and reptile expo this weekend. 20 different vendors set up and showcased hundreds of different species and the materials to properly care for each one. One vendor says they use this opportunity to educate the community about reptiles and build the future generations of their keepers. The education of how to properly care for the animal is the most important thing. You know, you just can't pick up a reptile and, you know, put it in a box. You need to be educated on how to properly care for these animals. Literally, the vendors here are uh, very experienced, very knowledgeable, and if you're going to want to learn about reptile keeping, this is the place to come. The next Morgantown Exotic Animal and Reptile Expo will be in April. Market on Main held their soft opening this weekend in Bridgeport on West Main Street. The new business only sells products from West Virginia vendors like Art and Woodwork. Over 30 vendors were handpicked to display and sell their products at the new business. The co-owners hope to make the building a gathering place for the community to show local businesses. 
come shop here. Support small, support local. It can be kind of a one-stop shop. You know, you can get groceries here. You can get, you know, different household items here. Like, it's not so much just a place you come to shop for a special occasion. One thing that I tell our makers, you know, when people do come in and get a chance to meet them and to see the faces and the families that are behind that product and, you know, who um, their purchases, who that supports, and to hear the stories about, you know, why people started doing it, you know, why Stephanie started making soap. I think all of those stories are interesting. An organic grocery store is expected to open in the business in March. The West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection, or DEP, will be updating wetland mapping over the next few years. The Environmental Protection Agency awarded a $322,000 grant to identify wetlands in 23 counties. DEP officials say wetlands are some of the most productive ecosystems in the world and are essential to sustaining the wildlife in the state. If we can't protect them, we lose those services. Uh, and so in order to protect them, we have to know where they are. That's the very first step. Most of the state is about 40 years old in terms of wetland mapping. And of course, there have been tremendous increases in technology since that time. The DEP says it will continue to seek out grants to finish mapping wetlands throughout the state. The Robinson Grand Performing Arts Center had to reschedule the Mark Wills concert that was originally scheduled for this weekend due to dangerous weather-related travel conditions for the artist and its band members. The concert has been rescheduled for Saturday, March 19th at 8 p.m. Any tickets purchased for the February 5th show will be honored in March. Officials also say that the Robinson Grand Performing Arts Center is constantly working to present a variety of cultural and arts experiences within a unique, modernized, historical setting in downtown Clarksburg. A statewide program is helping those struggling with addiction find jobs. The Jobs and Hope West Virginia program was started in 2019 and is designed to help people with substance abuse problems get clean and re-enter the workforce. Katie Everly was hired by the West Virginia Department of Transportation in September. Five years before that, she was struggling with a drug addiction. I started the Jobs and Hope program in 2020 uh, and I attended a heavy equipment training camp at Camp Dawson and learn the skills of, to operate heavy equipment in the certain different pieces of equipment in order to have the skills to be employable by the West Virginia Department of Transportation. Keep it clean, solve for more information on how clean. to sign up for the Jobs and Hope West Virginia program, visit our website, WBOY.com. Tributes for Queen Elizabeth happening today for her 70th anniversary since she's taken the throne following the death of her father, King George VI. NBC's Molly Hunter reports from London. Now, as the Queen marks 70 years on the throne, her platinum jubilee, the big news today that the Queen made last night is about her daughter-in-law, Camilla. So take a look at this. In a letter on the eve of today, the anniversary of 70 years on the throne, she writes, in the fullness of time, my son Charles becomes king. I know you will give him and his wife Camilla the same support that you have given me, and it is my sincere wish that when that time comes, Camilla will be known as queen consort as she continues her own loyal service. Now, three big takeaways from that announcement last night. Of course, the first, a reminder to the British people that her son Charles will become king and a reminder to support him but also to support his wife of 17 years, Camilla, who has been an incredibly loyal servant of both the royal family and of this country. Only reigning monarchs can change titles. So yes, while Charles could have done this when he became king, the fact that it comes from his mother means that she approves, that it goes with her blessing that Camilla will be called queen. And the other thing that we found out in that statement, of course, is that the Queen is not going anywhere anytime soon. None of this is happening imminently. She really renewed her vow to a life of service and to this country. Now, we did get a reaction from Charles and Camilla. They put out a statement earlier today writing, We are deeply conscious of the honor represented by my mother's wish as we have sought together to serve and support Her Majesty and the people of our communities. My darling wife has been my own steadfast support throughout. Now, today marks 70 years since the Queen ascended to the throne. We will not see her today. She's marking the day privately and discreetly up at Sandringham. Molly Hunter, NBC News, London. 
With a possible Russian invasion looming, a U.S. intelligence assessment isn't just warning of military deaths, but a staggering number of civilian casualties as well. As many as 50,000 Ukrainians could die in a conflict. Aaron McLaughlin is in that country's capital of Kyiv with the latest. Up. On the brink of war, residents in Kyiv are preparing for battle. That U.S. intel assessment warning this city could fall in a matter of days, in the event of a full-scale invasion by Russia. The potential toll immense. 25 to 50,000 Ukrainian civilians could die, and another 1 to 5 million may be forced to flee their country, many to nearby Poland. Alina Ulyanova says she's not going anywhere. She's training on the weekend with her two teenage boys. Are you scared for your family? We are all going to die someday, and uh, the thing you can do is you can live your life in dignity. These ordinary citizens are learning to handle weapons, administer first aid, and evacuate the wounded. They're learning potentially life-saving skills. Many here say they hope it doesn't come to this, but they're prepared to defend their homeland. According to one poll, half said they were ready to resist a possible Russian invasion. Ukraine's former defense minister says he believes that much resistance could be a critical deterrent, saying 150,000 Russian troops is not enough to hold a large part of the country. That's where the Russian problem is, is how they potentially going to keep any territories they acquire. But that's little comfort to those who say they believe an invasion is inevitable. It's a question only about time when it will be. But it will be. While the U.S. says an attack could come any day now, Ukrainian military analysts say they're eyeing February 20th. That's when Russia is expected to end its military exercises in Belarus. Will those forces stay or will they go? Noting that Russia could ramp up the pressure at any time. Now, the area's most accurate forecast Storm Tracker 12 weather. Certified storm ready and powered by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration, the official cleaning and restoration company of the West Virginia Mountaineers. Good evening, North Central West Virginia. Taking a look out at our traffic cams right now across Morgantown. Roads looking pretty clear right now, but there are some slick spots out there as those temperatures have decreased overnight, causing that refreeze to begin. But let's take a look across the rest of the region here. 32 currently in Morgantown, 23 over in Elkins, 24 in Davis, 20 in Oakland, 27 in Sutton, as well as Glenville and Middleburn, and 29 in Weston. So pretty chilly out there. Make sure you are bundling up as you head out. But if we take a look between now and 24 hours ago, we are about 20 degrees warmer across the region, 19 degrees warmer in Fairmont, 15 over in Elkins, 16 down in Sutton and Webster Springs, as well as 18 over in Ellenboro, West Union, and Middleburn. So luckily, we are going to continue this warming trend into the day tomorrow, and we will stay relatively warm through the middle of the week. But looking overnight, we are going to drop down into the teens and 20s. Very frigid conditions, very clear as well, and very calm winds out. And then 47 for a high tomorrow, much, much warmer than what we have been seeing recently. Get out, enjoy that sunny con those sunny conditions and that warmer weather tomorrow with those winds out of the southwest, allowing that warmth to be pushed in as well. But travel impacts are a concern for tomorrow as that snow has melted partially today and began to refreeze overnight tonight so make sure you are being extra careful on those roads with that we do have a two-hour delay for wetzel county snowbird report for tomorrow morning due to those roads but the rest of the region is still on schedule keep an eye out on that as we head overnight and into the morning though taking a look at our current radar we are relatively clear thanks to this high pressure system back to our northeast that's keeping us relatively warm and clear throughout the day today and for tomorrow but we do see this cold front here back to our west that's going to push into the region bringing us more clouds into tomorrow afternoon and overnight into tuesday and even a chance of some snow as we take a look at our predictor here we see those clear skies with those winds coming out of the southeast we're going to step this forward into tomorrow morning winds shift to coming from the south and we'll continue that as those clouds really begin to push into the region late tomorrow evening and we'll see those snow chances ramp up slightly into the early morning hours tuesday right after midnight monday night 
So make sure you are being a little more cautious about that. Cloud cover does remain for the day on Tuesday, very on and off, but until it begins to clear out into Tuesday evening and leaving us pretty sunny for our Wednesday. As we look at our seven-day forecast, 47 for a high tomorrow, that chance of snow late tomorrow evening, and then dropping down a little bit to 35 on Tuesday, but we rebound back up to near 50 degrees with those sunny skies for the middle of the week, and then another chance of snow comes as we head into the weekend. But I'll say, I'll take this weather over what we saw last weekend any day. <laughs> right, yes, it, it's a good uh, you know, warm up, but winter's not over yet, so we can't get ahead of ourselves. That's right. Thanks, Josh, we'll check back in in just a little bit. And now with a look at the Mountaineers, here is your Mountaineer Minute. Bob Huggins said following Saturday's loss to Texas Tech that he and the WVU coaching staff continue to work with their players on fundamentals and scoring near the basket. Jalen Bridges and Sean McNeil led the way for the Mountaineers in scoring and were the only two WVU players that made more than two shots from the floor in the game. But the Mountaineers struggled scoring near the basket on Saturday. The Mountaineers were just two of 17 in the paint and just three of nine inside the restricted area of the lane. It contributed to the worst shooting percentage of the season for WVU. I mean, we've made a conscious effort that that is the first thing that we do every practice with the bigs, tip stops and wraps. And we've tried, man. I'm telling you, we've tried. We've tried. We start practice every day, you know, with individual offense with their, we're, we're trying to get them, we're trying to get them better. We're trying to get them more fundamentally sound. The Mountaineers hope to end the losing streak on Tuesday versus Iowa State. Elsewhere, the WVU gymnastics program picked up wins over three opponents on Sunday, including rival Pittsburgh on the Panthers' home floor. West Virginia set a season high in overall points and recorded season bests on the uneven bars and the balance beam. WVU returns home to host Pitt on Friday starting at 7 p.m. at the WVU Coliseum. That's the latest on the Mountaineers here in Morgantown. I'm Ryan Decker. Stay connected. Download the 12 News app now. With cold weather here, there's never been a better time to jump in. At Leisure World, we carry a full line of Viking spas with new units arriving daily. Free delivery and setup with your purchase. So what are you waiting for? Let Leisure World of Weston make your dream of owning a hot tub a reality. Your home cleanup project is important. Call the professionals at Smallwood Sanitation. Cleanup projects are quick and easy with a roll-off, dumpster, or compact. From the garage to the attic, we'll help you tackle your toughest jobs. Smallwood Sanitation, family-owned since 1947. We're Brickside Bar and Grill. The truth is, after a truck crash, the odds are stacked against you, especially when you take on a large trucking company and their insurance companies. You only get one chance to do this right, and you have to make it count. Hire the team that knows what it takes to get the job done and done right. At Colombo Law, we are truck injury lawyers. It's what we do every day. When someone is hurt by a truck, Colombo Law is the law firm people call to get answers. Hurt by a truck? Call Colombo Law. Big sporting events are reasons to party and watch TV. How about a fresh hot pizza for your group? WBOY and 10 of the area's pizza places will give you 10 three-topping large pizzas for just $4 each. Log on to WBOY.com on Wednesday, February 9th at 7 a.m. and purchase your North Central West Virginia pizza card. You'll get one large three-topping pizza from each of our 10 sponsors. Great places like the Caboose in Clarksburg, Brickside Bar and Grill in Bridgeport and Fairmont, Giovanni's in Weston, Lots of Matza in Morgantown, and Policano's in Clarksburg. Only 100 cards will be sold. We're Brickside Bar and Grill. Follow Snowbird through all weather on WBOY. Brought to you by St. Joseph's Hospital. What drives you? Shop Toyota for legendary safety and reliability. Toyota, let's go places. Searching for a new car? Your Toyota dealer can work with you online or in person to reserve your new Toyota and take delivery soon. We can even help evaluate your trade-in. So visit your dealer and we'll get you lined up with the vehicle that's right for you. And let you know when your new Toyota is ready. 
check out the all-new Corolla Cross. Or pick a Highlander or RAV4 with 2.49% APR financing. Hurry, reservations are booking daily. Toyota, let's go places. Day three getting underway in Beijing, where Team USA is looking to add to the two medals it's already earned. NBC's Stephanie Ghost reports from Beijing. Big air speed and a couple of surprise silver medals for Team USA on the slopes. Jalen Koff came in second in moguls. I'm so happy. I can't believe I made it on the podium. And Julia Marino was not expected to medal at all, but then she landed this. A double front 10. Julia Marino probably just put down the best run I've ever seen her do. When you like stomp that last trick, you just have this like ball of energy that feels like it just wants to like explode out of you. It's the craziest feeling. What's even crazier is New Zealand getting its first gold medal ever in the Winter Olympics. Zoe Sadowski Sydney won slope style. A huge, huge! Oh my! Wow! Even her fellow competitors couldn't help but jump for joy. There was a more predictable but no less breathtaking moment of excellence in the figure skating team competition. 15-year-old Russian Kamila Valyeva makes the near impossible look effortless. A talent like this comes along once in a lifetime. Her short program helped put the Russian team in first place. The U.S. slipping to second with two rough performances. Karen Chen stumbled, then Vincent Joe pulled out of a quad in midair. I don't think anybody wants to be the one to let their team down, and so there's definitely, the, the pressure is there. But, you uh, felt it a little bit today? Well, I mean, I felt pressure. I, I'm practicing well here, so that definitely helps with the nerves when go time comes. One group of athletes would love for that go time to come. The men's downhill was postponed because of high winds. Strong gusts can be dangerous when skiers launch into the air at 90 miles an hour. And there have been few opportunities to practice on the course because of COVID. That race was rescheduled for today. U.S. bobsledder and U.S. flag bearer Elena Myers Taylor has been cleared to compete in the Olympics. She has been isolating in Beijing after testing positive for COVID 19. The runner up in teammate voting, speed skater Brittany Bowe, carried the flag in Taylor's place during the opening ceremony. Myers Taylor won a bronze medal in 2010 in Vancouver before adding silver medals in 2014 and in tw the 2018 Olympics, all in the two woman bobsled. This year, Myers Taylor will also compete in the monobob, the one woman event that is making its Olympic debut in Beijing. The Olympics aren't the only thing sports fans are ready to tune into. The Super Bowl is just one week away, and fans took to L.A. early to get a preview of the action. Who's house? Rams house! Who's house? Rams house! Thousands of football fans converged on downtown L.A. today for the opening day of the Super Bowl experience at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Oh, my God, it's a, it's a fantastic. This is my third one. I was uh, went to the one at the Rose Bowl a long time ago. Didn't know what it was. Then went to one in Florida. It was amazing. I took my 80-year-old dad. It was the funnest time, so I wasn't going to miss this. The Vince Lombardi Trophy was on display, and fans had their predictions on who will take it home after Super Bowl 56. Who's going to take the trophy? Like right here, the Rams be taking it all home, calling it. And who's going to win at the Super Bowl? Lambs! And for those with NFL dreams, they got to test their skills, saying they know what it takes to make it on to the big stage. What do you need to do to make the NFL? Just work hard. Work hard, practice. It's about drive. It's about power. Along with hitting the gridiron, fans could check out their team's gear. We got two, two LA Rams hats, the Super Bowl patch on it, another one. Yeah, we've got to wrap the team that we're from. And meet some of their heroes. John Merriman. Oh, Sean Merriman. Who's Super Bowl 56 is set for one week from today, Sunday, February 13th. Don't go anywhere. Josh is back with a look at our forecast right after this. Follow Snowbird and WBOY Storm Tracker 12 throughout the weather season. Brought to you by Schaefer Medea Law. 